sometimes as pilots, it helps to understand the bigger picture. AirVenture Oshkosh is an extremely complex airspace. We as VFR pilots can just follow the sections that are specifically meant for us, but it's useful to understand how the whole airspace fits together. In today's video, I'm going to go through the AirVenture Notum and talk about how all of the streams of traffic interact but don't overlap in a way that promotes safety. Here's the runway configuration of the Oshkosh Airport during the AirVenture event. Here is runway 9 and 27, which is the east-west runway at the north edge of the field. And here is uh, 18 right, 36 left, the main north-south runway, and the ta taxiway that's designated uh, 36 right, 18 left. For VFR pilots, the NOTAM breaks down what you do depending on which runways are active, which depends on which way the wind is. This is true for both arrivals and departures. So I'm going to put together how all the flows of traffic interact with a given wind direction uh, to try to organize it that way. Wind out of the northwest is the most common configuration and I think is the default for the first half of the week of AirVenture. Let's break it down. Helicopters enter and leave the Class D airspace along Wacaw Avenue, regardless of the wind direction. Incoming VFR traffic for 927 is at 1,000 feet AGL. Helicopter traffic is at 500 feet AGL, so they stay separated by altitude. Similarly, ultralight traffic comes in and out of the airspace over Highway 26. The ultralight traffic is at 300 feet AGL, and the VFR traffic going to 36 or 18 Overhead is at 1,000 feet AGL, so they stay separated by altitude. Warbird and turbine arrivals arrive from the southeast for runways 36 right and left. They do interact with the incoming VFR traffic for runways 36 uh, right and left, and so the controllers have to explicitly separate this traffic. IFR traffic is arriving from the east, and it will potentially interfere with VFR traffic arriving on 27, so controllers have to explicitly separate those traffic. VFR traffic departing runway 36 right goes on a heading of 150 to the southeast at 500 feet AGL, which keeps it underneath all the incoming warbird traffic. VFR de traffic departing runway 27 has a 90 degree arc that it can choose from. It is at 500 feet AGL, so it stays underneath the VFR arriving traffic for a runway 27, so they stay separated by altitude. And oddly enough, there is one little bubble of traffic that is barely mentioned in the NOTAM at all, but that's because outside pilots aren't flying it. East of the Pioneer Airport, south of runway 927, west of runway 36, is this bubble of helicopter traffic for the helicopter rides that circle over AirVenture basically all through the show. The northeast flow isn't that much different. Helicopter traffic and ultralight traffic stay separated from VFR just the same. Warbird and VFR separation are the same. IFR arriving and VFR arriving traffic uh, have to mix at the other end of the runway, but that's the same as before. Basically, VFR departing traffic on runway 9 or doesn't have any altitude restrictions. Southwest flow is a little more complicated. The approach controllers for 27 have three streams of traffic to separate, the VFR, the IFR, and the Warbird. Arrival traffic and departing traffic on 1-8 self-separate by altitude. All the other separations are basically like they were before. The southeast flow is actually kind of a mess, and I don't ever remember this actually happening at AirVenture. Arrival and departing traffic for 1-8 again stay separated by altitude. The controllers have to merge three streams of traffic coming into runway 9 -er. And the warbirds have this kind of complicated arrival route, which either might interfere with the VFR departing traffic or else it goes straight over the top of the field. I'm not even sure. I hope you enjoy that video. It's always worthwhile understanding the big picture in air traffic control. I hope you can uh, make it to AirVenture and visit even if you drive, follow regulations, stay ahead of the aircraft, and never stop figuring stuff out.